it's such an a great honor and a privilege to be here today. And I don't take it for granted at all. And I'm here today again excited because I have in the house with me the wind beneath my wings. If I've ever been anything, somebody heavily used by God has been the catalyst behind the scene. So, Afara Africa, celebrate for me, my husband. <laughs> celebrate him well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, that got me very emotional. When he said I was he's coming, I said, you are coming, okay? He said, I'll be here. I said, I gave it me the YouTube, he said, I'll be here. You know, when I, you're just, just watching online, I want to be here physically. That's so much. And I honestly appreciate you. I celebrate the team behind this great vision. Truth be told, two things start from the top, the grave and the well. Every other thing grows. Two things, the grave and the well. Every other thing grows. So I celebrate Afar Africa. I celebrate the visionary. God bless you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. You know, I, I followed him from the day I got the invite. When is one time I got an invite a year ahead of time? And I'm like, hello. You see, one year away, he said, yes, ma. And from that very first day, the excellence with which he moved amazed me. Even if I wanted to say no, the way the invitation was packaged, I couldn't have said no. And for a long time, I kept looking at the invite, and I, I was not reading it. I was just looking at it, and I'm wondering, a year away, and it is still like this. And when the countdown began, I'm like, how can you start countdown at this time? How do you want to sustain it? And I watched closely, and it was sustained. If you grew up when I did, one number that everybody, nobody wanted was number 13. Nobody's house is called 13. So if you're numbering the house, number 10, number 11, they'll jump, number 12, they'll jump 13, you have number 14. Hammer House of Oro, house number 13. But today is the 13th day of January. And I found out that with working with this visionary are 13 people. So I began to ask myself about 13, and I found out that we cheated ourselves in our generation to run away from the number 13. Because 13 talks about change. 13 talks about a fresh start. 13 talks about a uniqueness. And I said, yeah, if I had known, I'll have lived in house number 13 all my life. Because something great, something, re talks about a remarkable change, number 13. It's about a fresh start. That he's so fresh, he's so new, that it just erodes the pain, it erodes the confusion, it erodes the lust, it erodes the frustration, and gives you a fresh breath of life. So if you are here today, just celebrate yourself. Because you are entering into a new, a new lease of life. A fresh thing is starting with you today. It's a new face, it's a new day. I stand because God's grace has found me. I said to Leko, I don't have the stories that all the people ahead of me had. Why did you put me here? I listened to Victor and I'm like, hey, Jesus. And then Davis came, I'm like, holy ghost. I listened to the earlier speakers and I'm like, what? But you know, I found out something and my topic speaks a whole lot to me. I'm talking about the prize of an enviable destiny. Do you like their stories? You love their stories. Do you want to tell their kind of story five years, ten years from now? There is something called price. In two years, absolutely possible, but there's something called price. If you want to do it in one year, very possible, but there's something called price. When a generation that do not like to pay price, but when we love to receive price, but there is no price without a price. There is no testimony without a test. So when we don't want a test, you are saying you don't want testimony. If you want to have a testimony, eh, test comes first. If you want to get the prize, price comes first. But let's start very well. What's destiny? What's 
enviable and what price? I love to define because we can all be on the same page. When you say destiny, talk about a series of events that will necessarily happen. But there's a problem here about destiny. Many times we assume destiny just happens. I have been destined to be great. So, ki sera sera, whatever will be, hello, it will not be if you don't make it be. Law of motion, everything will continue in a particular speed except an external force is applied, either to push it forward or to stop it. But you know the truth, the easiest way to keep speed is when that force is from within you. Thank God for motivational speakers. If you cannot motivate yourself, they will only push you and the engine will stop. It's not enough to be ignited. Do you stay ignited? It's okay to be ignited. And then the engine is on. For how long will that engine run? Then you get onto the Todd Mainland Bridge and it traffic. Ah, and the engine begins to overheat. Do you have water in the radiator to cool the engine? Or the engine just goes off and then you are saying, hello, I thought I was ignited. Being ignited is beyond the stories you have heard in this room. And thank God for those stories. But next, what are you going to do with the stories? Destiny predetermined. Someone says, I've been destined for greatness. Every single person God made is destined for greatness, but only 1% gets there. Everybody is destined for greatness. But you know the problem? Everybody gets ignited. That story, wow, awesome. Oh, I love Pastor Sir Victory's testimony. Yay. You, can you imagine? I said, look at where she is today. That is my testimony. And you want to lead a prayer. Hey, wake up. Leave prayer alone first. Next. What are you going to do with it? The destiny of a pencil is to sketch, it's to write. But the question is, in whose hands is that pencil? If it's in a toddler's hands, it becomes a weapon. Drums with it, breaks it, and trashes it. It's in the hands of Leonardo da Vinci, a great artist and sculptor. He begins to draw with it. A golf ball in the hand of Tiger Woods is worth millions. A golf ball in your hand, next. So yes, destiny. Predetermined. God has a destiny for you. Yes, he does. God has a plan for you, but does not plan for you. Do you know there's a difference? He has a plan for you, but he will not plan for you. Enviable. To be envied, to be loved, to be delightsome, to be something that everybody wants to be like. Like everyone he has showcased, and even the keynote speaker. And price tells me there is a cost. So I'll talk to you very quickly, and I'll run it through. Six Ds that will lead to the seventh D. If you want to be ignited and stay ignited, and want a destiny that is powerful, number one, you have got to decide. It starts with a decision. And everything I'm talking about today is things that you will do for yourself. All that lecon. All that aura, all that, all the people, Gaze Baba, um, all the speakers, Victory, everybody, Davis, will do. They have done. Their work has finished. What are you living here with? What's your decision? Five years from now, who does your mute want to be? My decision. Ten years from now, my decision, it starts with a decision. What are you deciding today? I'm just going to clap. Wow, I love those stories. Ah, wow, I want to go to Shimawa. Hey, there's no copy and paste. You don't copy and paste the experience, you won't get the result. It's a process. But it starts with a decision. Robert Kiyosaki said, you and only you are responsible for your life your choices and your decisions. 
Tony Robbins said, decisions decide destiny. There is no action without a decision. Question, what are you deciding today? If you have a pen and a paper, or if you have a notepad on your phone, can you write down your decision? 2024, what's my decision? When you have taken a decision, the next D is discipline. You heard the last speaker, and God bless you, everyone that has spoken ahead of me. Thank you for telling your stories. Thank you for accepting to be vulnerable. We live in a time and a season, everybody just paints the picture. I will never tell you the, 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 the how. Ah, I prayed, and I told God I want to make a million dollars. And wow, voila, 10 years, the one million dollars came. Then I told him I want to have an acre of land in Shimawa, and voila, somehow, it did not happen somehow. Tire, 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 tire. If he wasn't faithful, collecting, what, how, how long did it take you to count 369 eggs? You know, some work, God, God can't send me that work, oh, he knows me. I'm too restless to be counting eggs, 369, ah. Then I counted, I said, God, you should know the number now. <laughs> God, God, Koletoi, you know the number. But I could sit down and count 300 and I was saying to myself, how did you count 369? Tell me to count 1 to 100, so I'm tired. A question, no, straight. Father, I've counted 10. This is how 10 looks. If 10 looks like this, 100 will look like this. So I can estimate. God, uh, uh, now you know the number. So let's just estimate. About the one person that is successful, they never estimate. They have incredible attention to details. It's a personal decision. Fired by discipline. What's your life routine? When you wake up in the morning, what do you wake up to do? Oh, every time I just wake up, shakarababa, I pray. Uh-huh, next. You see, you, prayer does not make you succeed. Uh-huh. How many church folks are here? Let me know if I should start going to the door. But prayer positions you to hear. The doing makes you succeed. When you have decided, you need discipline to follow through. When you wake up, start from morning routine. What's your morning routine? When I wake up in the morning, what are the things I must do in the morning? How do I plan my day? Do I have a to-do list? Or when I wake up in the morning, ki sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. It will not be. If you don't control your day, your day will control you. And whatever you get, don't complain. You will stay in the 99. God will keep moving, looking for who else will join the 1%. So what's your morning routine? Ah, exercise now, wow. Ah, I can't do this exercise. It be as it gets. Start from five minutes. You know what it does for you? It wakes your system up. The fact that you can stay faithful to exercising every day for two days gives you confidence to do the third day. Before you know what's happening, a habit has formed. Every successful person has a habit. Can yours take you to that promised land? Decide. Number two, discipline. Number three, diligence. Abigail Adams said, learning is not attained by chance. It was sought for with ardor and diligence. What is diligence? It's a constant and earnest effort to accomplish something. Because every activity has its obstacles. That thing he has said and shown us, and we're all loving, go and try to do it, and you discover that it is work. But when it is your area of calling or your area of strength, it's only easier. It is not easy. Please, Sazama, thank God for smart work. Hello, you cannot remove hard work. I was telling my friends a few days ago the story of my uncle, my brother-in-law, who I loved so much. And I always would say that, Ma, I have found one person in life who does not burn the midnight oil and who is successful. I said, I found somebody who sleeps well and who, makes, who is successful. He makes money. 
I was told that for you to make money, you need to burn the midnight oil. I was told that you need to work hard. But I found one person. When I'm going to, before I get home, he's asleep. By the time I'm leaving the house, he's asleep. So I found somebody successful who also loves sleep. That was my theory. And I lived with him, so I thought I knew. And I thought I was right. Until this beautiful day. So we we'll wake him up to come for morning devotion. And he'll come to morning devotion quite sleepy. And we finish morning devotion, he, goes, he gives instructions to the drivers, to the staff. And he goes back to bed. So I'm like, hey, I like this one. This is how to make money. I like this one. I, li- I mean, I love good life. I like this one. Until one day I went into his room, just before devotion. And I saw his, lap- his computer was on. I had to pick something for him behind his computer. And the thing was hot. So I went to my sister, who is a prof, who I knew will work in the night, the nocturnal one. I said, ah, why are you using my mommy man's computer? And she looks at me and says, who was using his computer? It was him. I said, what do you mean? He just woke up and said, ah, no. He's doing some things with some Asians. So he's running the two time frames. When we are sleeping, they are awake. When they are sleeping, we are awake. So he practically does not go to bed till about 3 a.m., 4 a.m., so when I see him come out in the morning around 6, still feeling sleepy, and I thought he slept from 10 p.m., I was very well self-deceived. Then I realized that I was living in a fool's paradise. So I woke myself up. I told myself, Yomi, there's nothing like smart work without hard work. But there's hard work without smart work. You had better learn to combine both diligence. So, I mean, how many deeds have I talked about? What's the first one? The second one? The third one? The fourth one? Determination. Be determined. You know why you need to be determined? The road they had sometimes. Sir, am I, am I right? Those who sing today and fill halls have sung for 10 people before. Those who hold concerts today and they fill the biggest halls in town have sung and only their family members showed up. It takes determination to continue. Because sometimes you just feel like a failure. I have put in all. I have prayed. I have fasted. I have moved. I have done everything possible in the books. And yet, all the fishes died. God, you, you are not in this thing. It says, go again, go and plant. Say, I should go and plant again. Ah, God, I know they do. The crops that are dead, I have not re- recovered. I should go and plant another one. It says, go again and plant. Without the power of determination, you will turn back. And guess what? The work of God continues. You will find somebody else who will do that same farming and deliver the result. The truth about life is this. God is not bereft of alternatives. The only thing he misses, the only person that misses is you. Because if he refused to take Shimawa up as a project, sir, by today there will still have been a farm in Shimawa. But the only person is that it's not going to have been you. Somebody said to God, if not for, ah, this thing is too difficult, this assignment you gave me is too difficult, I think I'm done. God said, you're actually not the first I called. You are the third. The first I called refused. The second started, dropped off. You are the third. If you say you're not doing it again, there are still four. If I have Bible students in the house, somebody told God, God, only me. God said, only you care. There are 7,000. How did he miss 7,000? Sometimes you feel you are the only ones. You are not the only one. As he shared the idea with you, he shared it with every other person. Question, who will run with it? Who will be determined to stay true? Ah, this icon. I've, I've tried it. I've tried, tried, tried. I know the person. Biko, 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 biko. Next. He will leave you to your choice. Number four is, what is determination? It's been resolute. It's been firm. Is having a fixed purpose. It's saying here, this is where I am. I live and I live here. Zig Ziglar said, success is achieved by ordinary people with extraordinary determination. 
You don't have to be extraordinary. Just let your determination be extraordinary. You will get there. Number five, deployment. Winston Churchill said, it's not enough that we do our best. Sometimes you have to do what is required. It's not always about it's your best. Sometimes, not even your assignment. Who was talking about golf here? That you, have, you, want to, you want to put it in that hole. You push it that way. Sometimes it's not in your line. It's not really in your line. But God said, look, look at this place. Can you do this? You do a bit of it. You don't know what God is doing. Connect to somebody and say, ah, you mean you can do that also? Can we partner? You are going there. God is saying, turn to the right. Say, God, ah, it's a wall. So just keep going. But God, I'm by the wall. Say, so stay by that wall. Then somebody says, ah, what are you admiring there? And somebody meets you there and takes you in the path of destiny. Many times for somebody to give us assignment to do, it's time to give yourself the assignment. What, even if somebody is telling you to do it, if you know to do it, deploy yourself, get it done. Next, dependability. And this is where a lot of us are lacking. Particularly my generation, the young people. We, the under 30s. We, the under 30s. We. If anybody laughs funnily, dear, you will come and tell me my age. Because a lot of times, we are, we are bubbly. We have the energy. We have everything. But we, so, ah, this work, g -g -g I will do it, I will do it. But then I come to us, show me how far. Ah, eh, I tried though, but eh, it be as it gets. And we are pondered, and we are not dependable. It's one thing to have all the English language. It's another thing to be dependable. How dependable are you? How dependable are you? Zig Ziglar said, Ability is important in our quest for success, but dependability is critical. So what's my first D? Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. If you put all together, trust me, you'll be delightsome. The world will stand and watch you. The sky cannot be your limit. You'll be envied. You'll be sought after. Doors will open for you because you have paid your price. God bless you.